You see, I've got this itch, and today we're gonna scratch it. In the past year, we started selling our first bow, the bones. My wild idea is that I want to teach you how to build the bones, but not only that, I want to build it with you. And I've been working on this for a while. And I've been working on this for a while. And I've been telling the guys to work on this for quite a while now. And I'm still sewing gloves. But before we release this, there's a few more things I want to test. And so today we need to accomplish three things specifically. Number one, how does the bow react to a different width? We're gonna test poundage and smoothness of shooting. Number two, I'm gonna standardize the tailoring measurements. And number three, we're gonna auction this bow. We're gonna start that sucker at boom. So before we test out the limb widths and how smooth it is and how much that changes the poundage, we need to shape the handle so that we can shoot it. Big profile done. Now we just need to knock this all down on the belt sander. Take your time on the faster tools and it'll do you good. I mean, do you realize that this could be your bow? Absolutely. I mean, right now. Moved over to the other shop now because Zach's gone today, and this whole area is completely set up to build the bones. That's the only, like, that's what we're maximized for, so I'll be able to go a lot quicker. But I want to give you a little bit of the inside scoop. So, 
When you sell a product, especially a bow, something moving like this, you wanna know every single failure point. That's why we've stress test these to 35 inches and beyond. We try to put it through the ringer, and that's why I treat bows bad sometimes, is because I wanna treat it as bad as possible. I've left one of these bows strong for a year and a half. Why? So that I can screw it up so that you never will. But when I'm thinking about doing a kit bow, doing a bow that you guys could build along with me, I wanna know other things. So we normally make the limbs three quarters of an inch down to an inch and a half. But what happens when it's an inch wide? I don't know, how does it shoot? I haven't made one at an inch wide. I wanna know how that shoots. And I also wanna know how much poundage we lose if we go from an inch down to three quarters of an inch. So that's the first thing we're gonna test right now. like I'm the tip overlay dentist <laughs> It takes no skill really, it's basically impossible to mess up. Now this is the first tip overlay I've ever done in my life today. Hi guys, I hope your day is going good. Mine's getting spunky. Got any pliers? I guess that, huh? Close. Got the tip overlays in a spot to where we can draw it on the tillery tree and we can actually shoot it. But before we do that, we're about a 16th inch off on the tiller, so I'm gonna fix that, take off some of this glue, scuff it up a little bit, and then we'll be able to test the actual smoothness because if the tiller's a little bit off and it's wider, it's the tiller, possibly not the width. But if the tiller's correct, then it could be the width. So we'll find out for sure in three minutes. I find this extremely fascinating. So this is one inches at the end here. This is three quarters inches. We normally finish at a three quarter inch limb width. So this one's much wider. And my question is, what is that going to change? Because in my mind, I think I know it's gonna make it a heavier draw weight, right? Well, I'm pretty sure about that. But the big question for me is, will it actually make it faster? Because you can think about it this way. What if it's a wider limb width but it's not actually faster even though it's heavier poundage. Because maybe when I go real thin on the limbs, it increases the speed because you got less bow going through the air. Maybe that's the case. So we're gonna figure that out. But I also wanna test out the poundage here real quick. So let's see what we're looking at. I fixed that tiller we were talking about a second ago. We're right at 45 pounds. So I'm gonna shoot this. Let's see how it feels. We reduce that width. We're gonna test out through a chronograph the speed now and the speed 
when it's thinner, which one's faster? Which one's smoother? And which one has, what's the difference? <laughs> what's, the, <laughs> what's the difference in the poundage? The profound third option. <laughs> I haven't counted, but with our actual finished bones, I've shot a lot of them, so I have a good idea of what it's supposed to feel like. So let's see how this one feels. Let's shoot it. That actually, it does feel worse. A lot more vibration, I think. Yeah, definitely a lot more vibration than our normal bow. We're ready for the speed test. This is the one inch width bow. We've got a 45 pound bow currently with a 450 grain arrow, so 10 grains per pound of draw weight. Chronograph is set up. Let's see what our readings are. 168 feet per second on the first one. We'll do two more and see what they are. 171 feet per second. So 68 to 71, that's gonna be like 169.5 feet per second average. If the finished bones is 100% smooth, we're gonna do that as a baseline. This is 75% of the way there. So it doesn't shoot terribly, but it doesn't shoot great. And I think I can get this one exactly, well, I know I can get this one to 100%. How we're gonna do that is thin the limb tips to the optimal range for this bow, which is three quarters of an inch. And then we're gonna test out the poundage, the speed, and the smoothness again. Kaz is taking a couple shots to see his verdict. That one's really vibrating. I'm speaking for Kaz here because I don't wanna give him a mic. So basically what he's saying is he tested the real bones to the one that's not the right width yet. And he thinks that this one is a 67% if that one's 100. And with that being said, it's lunchtime. Seriously, it's lunchtime. <laughs> For every single bow shape, there's an optimal taper. So for a recurve bow, it's generally a little wider and then cuts and steep at the end, where maybe a reflex deflex bow, a continuous taper all the way down might be smoothest. But the width of the limb and the taper of the limb needs to match how the bow is shaped. And there's some point in there that's about as optimal as we can get it for it to shoot smooth and fast. And so this is not optimal having it an inch wide. So we're gonna take this down to three quarters of an inch. What we have already tested, what we already know shoots fantastic, but we're gonna leave the base here at the fade out the same and make that a continuous taper. Then our bow's gonna shoot. <clears throat> Show emotions, we just keep it down, down inside. Yeah, you and I both longing for expression for the things we like, but we stay quiet. Hold me now, hold me now, tell me things, tell me all about how you feel. Just let yourself go. Say it loud, say it loud, wake the world on the other side, make it real. Thoughts are appropriate to talk. I think I just got lucky. Here's my eyeballed handle that's almost done. And tip over lays. Pretty close. It's, it's not too far off. I mean, which does make sense because we did design the bones handle off of it, true. the true. Oh, it's true. <laughs> we did we did make changes though. Oh yeah. I tried, I made the fade out a little more similar to the way you've been doing it, but. Yeah, I like that actually, that's fun. I like it a lot. Let's test it. 
It was 45 at one inch. We went down to three quarters. What'd you guess? I'm thinking it dropped to 42. 40, 40. 40 point, uh, 12. Uh, 40, <laughs> 12 Did I say 42 and a half? No, you didn't. <laughs> you said 42. No, you said 42. No. You said 42. no, I got the footage. <laughs> 40. If you both say something, there's a 99% chance that's right. We're back at the chronograph with the thinner limbs. We did drop two and a half pounds in draw weight. So what's your guess? Is the speed gonna drop or because it's thinner limbs, is the speed gonna be similar? Well, let's find out. 168, shot two. 172. 170. Even though we dropped two and a half pounds of draw weight, we gained efficiency for the style of bow and ended up having this bow average 0.7 feet per second faster than the heavier poundage bow. That's pretty sweet. On top of that, this thing's really smooth now. So you got a faster bow and a smoother bow just by changing how the bow is designed. That's why a well-designed bow matters. Now put on six coats of finish. I'm gonna let that sit and cure. But real quick on the kit bow that I just basically built out, I wanted to test that to see how it would go with having the blocked handle and building everything from scratch by hand. And that's why you saw me on multiple different tools because I was testing out what it would take to make that bow. Now if you'd be interested in something like this to build for yourself, let me know, we may be able to offer it through Shatterproof Archery. In the comments, you can leave any ideas you have along these lines because we wanna add as much value as possible and offer everything you need in it and nothing you don't.
I named this bow Spunky. It's effectively the bones, but made by hand instead of with templates. I know I can be silly and goof off in a lot of these videos, but setting the fun aside for a minute, we have put extreme thought and testing into this bow. Here's a few things we've implemented. In the throat of the handle, we slightly angle it away from the arrow rest. This provides a really secure feeling handle in the hand that doesn't slip. This is a concept Tom Clum talks about. We've tested it, and believe it's true. We've laminated three pieces of walnut together so that we'll have extra strength in the handle. We also have shaped the limbs as a reflex deflex bow to optimize for the smoothest shooting bow possible. The arrow rest is cut to center and the sight window is vertical with a naturally canted bow. This provides a great sight picture for the archer. We convex the arrow rest so there would be little friction between the arrow and the bow. And the bow I built today is a 58 inch AMO with a 41 pound draw at 28 inches. The bow's firing at 171 feet per second with a heavy arrow and up to 200 feet per second with a light arrow. The bones is optimized for quietness and smoothness and there tends to be a correlation that the quieter a bow is, it's smoother because there's less vibration in the hand. And this one right here does not disappoint. Now I'm gonna put the microphone as close to the bow as I can, zoomed all the way out. You may not be able to see well, but this is as close as we can get to the bow and the real sound of it. That is 11 inches from the camera. Okay, now you're 10 yards away at the target. This is what it sounds like from the target's perspective. It's always a good sign when you finish making a bow and you wanna keep it for yourself. But I'm not going to. One of you guys needs this. So I'm gonna auction this off starting at $10. It's gonna be a two day auction ending Sunday night. And if you have missed the auction deadline, stay tuned because more auctions will be coming soon at shatterproofarchery.com. And if you want videos to keep coming, there's two ways that you could support. Number one, it would be great if you would subscribe. We've got probably the worst subscribe rate on YouTube, and that's probably because I never mentioned it. And number two would be that you could tell your friend about Shatterproof Archery. Both of those are absolutely free, and it would mean the world to me. You have a fantastic day. Stay shatterproof, and I'll see you on the next video. We've got a one inch, uh, blah, blah, blah. dang it, Kramer, you're better than that. Let's go.